Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to paint the one and only Miles Davis. Okay, first things first. Gloves. If you have any questions about oil paint toxicity and safety, I'd be glad to at least point you in the right direction. But rest assured, it's much more safe than even I previously thought. My only real concern lately is the use of paint thinners like Gamsol, but rest assured there's plenty of non-toxic alternatives, and I'm very eager to discuss all of these things in a future video, so look out for that. You'll notice a wide variety of paint prints here, some cheap, some expensive. Always be willing to try something new. Starting with Titanium White, that's a gambling paint. Pretty nice, but uh, lately I've been using this Flake White hue a lot more. Flake White is uh, an imitation of Lead White and is not toxic, by the way. It's just a bit more sticky than uh, Titanium. Followed by Cadmium Red, which is the most brilliant uh, red I have. Brilliant as in bright. Much more bright than this Transparent Maroon here, which is a very mm, see-through purpley color. Followed by Transparent Red Oxide, which is a uh, similar but much warmer and oranger. And then we have yellow ochre, and you'll notice that most of these colors are nice and warm and earth tony, and that's just personal preference. You may enjoy more things like this cobalt blue here, which is very warm, uh, relatively, and brilliant blue. Then we got ivory black, of course, which you will always need, and then last but not least, French ultramarine blue, which is uh, great to mix with your blacks. I thought I'd share this little moment of what to do when one of your paint tubes is looking a little skinny. And of course you just use the old toothpaste strategy and roll it up so that's no big deal. You can usually get four or five paintings out of something like this. Something I completely failed to mention in the last video was brushes. And that's because I think there's not too much to say about it. You'll need a wide variety of them including a lot of bristle brushes like this Princeton one here. Bristle is much more firm and holds a lot more paint and pushes it around a lot more easy than, easily than uh, these softer brushes like this Royal and Langnickel brush here. This is basically a makeup brush and I use it primarily for blending. It's super soft and lovely. That one's definitely the star of uh, this show, but the other big workhorses will be this half inch uh, flat angled shader brush, which is a velvet touch brush, and also this size zero filbert velvet touch Princeton brush definitely my main brushes I've done countless paintings with those two brushes and so we begin at the end of another painting uh, you see me wiping off a completely different effort here and it wasn't that bad to be honest but it had to go if you're curious about what it was you can join me on my patreon and just for a dollar you can see all kinds of behind-the-scenes goodies and of course support me in this uh, YouTube endeavor so we begin with a kind of egg shape here, trying to decide how to compose this image onto the surface. And I don't usually start with an egg shape, but I've recently let go of a lot of uh, formulaic uh, procedure and just started improvising, which is very appropriate for this subject. So you see me looking for the eye line here, finding the eyebrows, finding the eye sockets, uh, drawing parallel lines to find where the nose should be, where the mouth should be, where the chin should be, where the hairline should be. And from there, it's just a matter of uh, rehearsing your anatomy knowledge and I look for cheekbones, I look for the jawbone, I look for the angle of the nose. And of course I'm aiming for accuracy but I'm not obsessing over accuracy. If I wanted to be super accurate I'd, I'd, uh, I'd draw this out, I'd, I'd draw it out with pencil. I'd make sure it's perfect. But this didn't feel right for this particular painting. So I'm just having fun painting. And this usually means I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, but that's gonna be okay. I, I approached this painting with uh, a great mood, and that was, I wanna sit here and play with paint for many hours, so that's what I do. In fact, the whole painting time on this piece ends up being over three hours, which is pretty long for me. Uh, this painting is fairly large. It's say about 14 by 14 inches. It's an, it's an odd shape. Usually you don't want to compose on such a square surface, but uh, it ended up being pretty successful, I think. So um, immediately here I'm looking for uh, the eyes and seeing if I can lock them down 
quickly because that's essentially the whole point of portrait painting is if you can capture that soul in the eyes there you see that i did a little oval to indicate the forehead area there that's going to be helpful for um helping me define my three-dimensionality of this whole piece i did a nice relaxed letter m for the mouth indication there i think that uh, looks pretty neat and that'll about do it for this uh, linear lay-in section of the painting here you see me looking for the the hairline and uh, where the ear should go, where the jaw ends, all these kind of things. Uh, not being too uptight about anything right now, it's all going to be painted over, of course. But this is my basic guide. So now we move on to uh, some tone, and I start with that very warm, uh, transparent red oxide, which is probably the first of many mistakes I'll make. I definitely should have used the cooler maroon color. This is way too warm, so for the rest of the painting, I'll, I'll essentially be battling that warmth and trying to cool it down and dull it down with a lot of uh, blues but it's uh it's fine it's it's just the beginning here and it's okay to make mistakes be be prepared to make mistakes and to figure out clever solutions so my key um goal here during this early phase is to paint around the highlights everything that is not getting what ends up being a very cold bright white light I'm, uh, I'm adding this warm tone to it. That blue looks a little crazy, I'm sure, uh, for the hair there, but I just needed a really dark, dark. I wanted to start getting some contrast into this image. I wanted it to feel three-dimensional pretty quickly and uh, back to the eyes here immediately just like that they start taking shape which gave me a big boost of confidence because I tend to feel very iffy at, <laughs> at these early stages of whether or not I can pull off the thing I'm trying to do but just with this with this these moments here of this dark paint I realize, yeah, this is going to end up being okay. And so I decided to get out that soft brush. This is the very first pass with that uh, basically makeup brush. And I'm going to smush things around. There's no paint on that brush. Truthfully, the, the main point of it is to help me cover more of the empty space and it's always my biggest hurdle um, covering all of this these little gaps that I'm leaving with these gaps everything tends to feel very fragmented and incomplete so using this soft brush to cover those areas is very helpful for it to start feeling more cohesive and coherent so uh, putting in some of the blue here, this is pretty much straight uh, ultramarine, I think. Maybe it's cobalt, but either way, it's very washy right now, and it's definitely going to get painted over these strokes here. I'm adding a little white to put behind the head there and really make the head stand out. Essentially, putting cold colors in the background is going to pop forward your warm figure. So that's a great thing to keep in mind. So yeah, all of these strokes don't matter, right? And they're going to be painted over. I never think that's true. I think every single stroke you make should matter. Paint it like the most uh, important stroke you've ever done. <laughs> make every stroke interesting to you, the artist. Because if it's not interesting to you, how could it possibly interesting be interesting to anyone else? That's my motto. I'm always trying to push 100% all the time so that eventually that can just become my normal and I don't have to try so hard, it's just what I do. We all want um, interesting charismatic brush strokes and the only way to do that is to practice. So they're um, using that background color, that very cold uh, white and blue there and putting that in for some preliminary highlights on the face there on the forehead above the upper lip which is a huge a huge area for for catching light and making things look realistic the upper lip area remember that one 
and working on that uh, cheekbone there, you'll see me working on that spot a lot during this painting. It's I felt it crucial to capturing Miles Davis's likeness was to get that very sharp cheekbone. We all have our defining features and the things that make us look like us. So as a portrait artist, it's, it's pretty important to study a lot of different uh, facial features, a lot of different eye types, lip types, nose types. And uh, for Miles Davis here, I, I really, <laughs> he has a very, dare I say, cute nose and very sharp cheekbones. So those are the two areas that I focus on the most in this painting. I guess you could call this the end of step three, if you want to think about it like that. Step one being the linear lay-in, and uh, the second step being the shadow block-in. And this one, adding some more color, thinking of it as a rough sketch of what the whole piece will ultimately become. So as I start blending this out, you'll notice that the quality somewhat dipped, and that's because I took a break, and when I came back from my break, I accidentally set my camera at 720p, so uh, enjoy this faster <laughs> segment as we speed through this quickly, and uh, I guess that brings up a pretty crucial point which I wanted to talk about, and that is the concept of breaks, and how profoundly important it is to take breaks in order to make good art. Maybe it's a personality thing, but I always found it very difficult to know when to stop and take a break. I, I suppose leaving when I know I have so much work to do is why that is. But a, a great pro tip for taking breaks is leave when you know what your next step is going to be. That's a great time to do it. Because if you leave when you have no idea what to do next, that feeling is not going to leave you. So uh, personally, uh, I find it very helpful to just look at something else, step away, take a walk, and lately I've been grabbing my guitar a lot, so I thought I'd be brave here and show you guys how I take breaks and recorded myself playing guitar. So enjoy that for a bit, and when we come back we'll be in glorious HD. All right, back to work. Break time's over. Let's go ahead and take a look at how I mix flesh tones here. Uh, I started with a lot of, of that uh, flake white, and we're going to add a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of cadmium red, and you'll get a nice peachy flesh tone there. But what I need at this moment is a much lighter, cooler, duller highlight. So I'm adding some of that cobalt blue. I'm adding more white. I'm adding more red. I'm just mixing and mixing and mixing until I'm finally happy with it. And then you see me putting it on there, and that looks about right to me. But there's a lot of work left to do. This is what you call the ugly phase of the painting. The key here is to just keep pressing on. You can see a lot of empty space still, uh, like above that left eye here. And the way to get rid of it is to just blend it out. As soon as I do, things start looking a little bit more human. And 
and this soft brush here being so crucial to this whole painting method. And as I was doing this, I thought a lot about the ocean and the tides coming in, the waves creeping in a little bit closer every time. And that's how we paint. You apply thicker layers of paint and then break them down with the soft brush and you do it over and over again and each time you do it gets a little bit more complete but really with this uh, soft brush here I get that lovely smoky look which is uh, just my favorite I think I like to push things into complete lost edge as you can see on the left side of the face here I'll bring it out later but for the moment I found that to be very pleasing so pick and choose what edges are lost what edges are very uh, contrasted very sharp things like hair can recede into the background without having to be so sharp so blend out hair I, I see that a lot in, in a lot of uh, more amateur painters more beginners they tend to leave hair so hard and hair usually isn't that hard unless it's wet. It's now going back to that left side of the face here. I'm making some areas of it very uh, distinct and, and sharp, but leaving that lower cheek area nice and blended out. At this point here, you'll see me pushing a lot more gray around the muzzle area of the mouth. And this brings up color zones. So especially for more masculine types, you really want to push grays around the jaw area. And that's obviously because of things like uh, that five o'clock shadow. But uh, even on more feminine types, you, you push a little gray ar around the jaw. It's a very bony area and it doesn't have as much rosy blush as say the cheeks, the nose, and the ears. So that's the next color zone. That kind of band of cheek, nose, ear make it very flush, even more red than you might think. And you can always dull it down, back it off, but really push that idea. And finally, the third zone would be the forehead. And that area doesn't have much blood flow, so you want to push that one a little bit more yellow and if you keep to that rule you'll find that your portraits look a lot more realistic and lively definitely taking that from james gurney who is a master and i'm sure he learned that from uh, an even older artist but yes never feel any um hesitation about using other artists tips quoting them sharing that knowledge that's truly the only way we artists can learn and grow is by copying each other copying sounds like a bad word but truly artists learn by watching each other and mimicking each other so that's why i'm very proud to have these videos here on youtube to just be rewatchable over and over again of course, it is extremely sped up. At this moment, I am 2,300% faster than uh, normal speed. So if you want to see a more slow down, completely 100% real-time painting come to life, you can always catch me at my Twitch. And I stream not so regularly, but <laughs> often enough. You're more than welcome to hang out and chat with me there. And also on uh, YouTube, I may start streaming here as well. So look forward to that. So at this moment, uh, underneath the nose here, what I'm doing is I'm taking a small amount of paint and a lot of paint thinner, and I'm essentially wiping off that black paint that was there. It looked too flat to me. I wanted to have a little bit more depth. So the great, the best way to achieve that is to use transparent paint. And now it has a really cool look to me. In fact, uh, this nose, and in general, I love painting noses. I, I'm going to work on it a lot, and as soon as I feel that it's looking nice and round and 3D, a little highlight on there, everything uh, starts coming together. I think at this point, I essentially got it. My my gesture portrait of Miles Davis. I've captured enough of his likeness here at this moment 
that if I were to stop at this moment, I'd be okay with that. But of course, uh, we're really trying to push, well I am, I'm really trying to push my skill here. So I'm gonna see how far I can take this. It's gonna be a lot of just uh, fiddling around with little, little edges and stuff like this. A really experimental approach here using a palette knife. I felt I needed some sort of uh, visual noise, especially in the hair, especially uh, in like the eyebrows, the jaw area. I thought it'd be a good idea. I ended up painting over most of it, but I think it was a good, uh, a good thing to try. You really need to be brave enough to experiment in moments like these. So I, I made these crazy strokes with palette knife, and then I just kind of blend them out. And uh, what I like, I keep, and what I don't like is removed. And I think it looks good. Be brave. I'm always saying that to myself. Be brave enough to wipe off an eye you just spent an hour trying to render. Just with the hope that it could look a little bit cooler. Ooh, that, so that stroke there on the nose, that might be my favorite moment in this whole painting, and I distinctly remember doing it. At that moment, uh, you know, it's a rare thing to have just a stroke that completely captures exactly what you wanted. So right in, under that nose, that really warm stroke, that's a keeper. I'm going to keep that one. It's important not to fall in love with brush strokes like that, especially so early into the painting. But at this point, especially now after I've blended it, I'm thinking that whole head looks pretty nice. So uh, at that moment, I, I take a break from it, look at something else for a while, mess around with this background. And it's mostly blue, of course, uh, Miles Davis's most famous record is called Kind of Blue, my favorite as well. So I'm really trying to push blue overall as the theme here, cheating it into places where it probably doesn't belong, like above the eye there. His eyes are actually blue, at least in this photo, and I didn't realize that, so that's pretty cool. Very striking look. Some of the biggest eyes I think I've ever painted. It's a, it's a quite large painting, actually. I don't normally paint heads at this full size, or maybe even more than full size. And I do that because of on my live streams, I like to have the palette on the camera. So with my next painting, I believe I will do a much smaller, smaller painting and you'll be able to see me mix color, which is also pretty important for students. Definitely put in uh, the highlights of the eyes way too soon here. It's a thing that I just can't help but do, I'm constantly telling people to uh, refrain from that instant gratification of dropping in a highlight. Save it for the end. It's definitely the cherry on top, the icing on the cake. You need to build the thing first before you add those peak highlights like that. As soon as you do though, everything starts coming together. So I'm using a bigger brush here, realizing that I've been using a small brush way too long. So I'm using big strokes like that one above the upper lip there and on the jaw. I think that's a nice uh, variation of brush strokes now. Always getting darker and darker into that uh, pupil. And I think I finally locked down that eye on the right there, which I believe is the uh, focal point of the whole painting. So I thought I might talk a little bit about Miles Davis himself, the man, the legend, uh, definitely my favorite jazz musician. I took jazz band in high school, uh, begrudgingly I, I, I didn't want to, my teacher pretty much forced me into it, he needed a bass player. And I just didn't get it, I simply didn't understand jazz, not that I understand it now, but I think I have a, at least much more of an appreciation for it. Uh, he gave me a couple CDs to listen to, he gave me things like Dave Brubeck, which were cool. But then he gave me Kind of Blue, and I had such a reaction to it that I wasn't expecting. This guy here, Miles Davis, <laughs> he sang things through his trumpet. Uh, I truly didn't understand what jazz was until I heard him speaking as if he was using his own voice through his instrument, telling a story. And I think at that moment, 
uh, I decided this painting was done. And I signed it, give a little victory sign, and there you go, Miles Davis, my very own uh, keeping, uh, I'm going to keep this portrait myself, it's going to hang in my library, I believe. Something I've always wanted, to be honest. And I think I will continue doing paintings of uh, my heroes like this, so just so that I can have them around. So with that, I think uh, we're all done here. Thank you so much for watching. Here's some credits. Thank you so much to my Patreon patrons for supporting me, please. Feel free to go there and look at the high resolution images of the painting. Uh, the shout out to Beans for showing up in the video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.